Hey guys, welcome to Shed. I'm kind of out here today trying to wind down a little bit. Something's got me lit up. Boy, I'll tell you about that in a minute. I don't want to forget, I want to uh, talk a little bit about the music day. It's going to be Bill Abel, uh, North Mississippi. Bill Abel right there, B-I-L-L-A-B-E-L. -L -L -E Shout out to you, Bill. Hey, you like this cup? Anyway, we're going to get back to this stuff in a minute. Before I go on my rant, I need to tell you what the episode's about. We're building a couple of these North Mississippi uh, picnic festival guitars. And we're going to talk about the tailpiece today, uh, where our strings go up through. We'll get to that here in a minute. But let's get down to what I'm kind of upset about here. You know, when I first started building Cigar Boss guitars, there's a couple people I paid close attention to. One of them was Darren Brown. Hey, I've never said your name before, but don't kid yourself. All the aging and stuff, I paid attention to your video, videos, blah, 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 rented lifts early on. And next one is Darren Dukes. Darren Dukes, I started off buying necks off of you, uh, and I learned so much off of you. And I think you can see both of you all in my work. Now, I find it interesting, they say that what, imitation is the highest form of flattery, something like that anyway, I'm not much on Hallmark cards, but when I look in my email box and I get compliments from people saying, hey, I tried this, I saw this on your channel, I really like that, uh, I like seeing guitars that people are building where you can tell some of the stuff I typically do, like the RV sink drains, the matchbooks on the neck, uh, the floating bridges, that kind of stuff, you know. That's pretty cool, I look at it, but, uh, you know, if you're just going to flat out take what's the essence of me and paint it out and hold it out as your own, yeah, I don't really think too much of that. Um, and there's somebody been doing this to me for like 60 years. How would you like that? 60 years of somebody just taking what's you and holding it out as their own. And then turn around making money off of it, right? So, what am I talking about? I'm talking about this. What's a big deal? What do you mean what's a big deal? Bibs? Orange shirt? You know what? You know this is going to sell 100 million units. You know that, right? You think they would say, hey, we made this because it's Ken. Ken. You saw the episode had the clip in it called Ken Ken. I'm going to give it to you up there. That, that'll help you all understand it. The, the ones that side fully understand what I'm talking about. But doesn't see. You see anything on here that says Ken? No, it says Barbie. You know what? If there was no Ken, there wouldn't be no Barbie. I, you can take that any way you want, including in the biblical sense, but it doesn't say can. So you think you're going to throw this out there and nobody's going to notice this is me, right? And then you'll put some name on it like Sweet Orchard. Yeah, I got some fruit you can pick, son. Anyway, this is not going to go away. This is the final straw. What, you don't see the resemblance here? Anyway, I got to build a guitar or something. This is really bugging me. So let's uh, let's hit the bench. It talks to me too. Sounds just like me. Anyway, let's go. All right, we are ready to put this tail piece together on this license plate uh, guitar that's going to go off to uh, one of the Kimbros and a festival they're having. So it's tail piece time. Um, before we get into all that, um, I want to tell you one more time. Celestial trained Bill Abel. Bill Abel is no stranger to North Mississippi Hill Country music. He plays it, he records it, he produces it, and I'll tell you what, he also makes some pottery, and there's nothing like cold water out of a Bill Abel cup. Let me drink this quick. Yeah, that was water. But you can tell if it's a Bill Abel cup because it says, a B E L right there. Abel, Bill Abel. Bill Abel, love you, man. So what we're gonna end up with in short order is I'm gonna end up with something where the strings are gonna be held here. Um, they're gonna come up through here, right here, 
and um, I'm also going to need to ground the strings uh, and this is how I do this so I've done an episode called grounding the strings it's got Reverend Peyton in it. I'm gonna give you a link right up there and you've seen this a number of times but I'm gonna focus this all up right now for you and show you how to do it real quick now in terms of what we're gonna need we're gonna need a small drill bit for uh, drilling pilot holes a little bit bigger drill bit we've got a t-square we need some of this copper tape this stuff is a lifesaver buy it in a roll don't buy it in little pieces buy it in a roll it's gonna be really economic for you to do it that way and hint they use this stuff to keep snails out of gardens so look for snails and copper tape I've got my uh, temp that I built here that I usually use to string up four string guitars give me some string spacing that's going to be handy for me I've got my little T square I got a piece of metal sometimes I use ball canning lids sometimes I use metal from the next door or some hoodoo church that People were doing all kinds of crazy stuff with mason jars and God knows what. You might have a piece of that around and then my trusty awl. So let's get to work laying this out and I'll show you what I do. All right, tear it up, Bill Abel. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to realize there's going to be a floating bridge right here. Now, when I line my strings up on the tailpiece and the bridge and the knot and up here I don't know if you can see that you can see that I want my strings to be in the same place all the way through so if I don't pay attention to that they're going to be binding up here and there and trying to jump off the bridge so I use this and we'll put this down here you can see that I've already done this I've taken a mark put it there there and then I move it up here for the other two strings line this up put a mark there and one there once I've got those marks I can take my little square and I can draw a line like so and like let me move this drill like so and then I can also take and draw the line this way this way this way and this way and it gives me the intersection points is where I can take my rubber mallet and my all remember you don't just go to drilling on something because this will start walking all over the place then you got a mess going on but I'm going to tap I can see I've tapped this like so and now I've got my points that I need to drill through and I'm going to do that with this small bit and do my pilot holes all right there we go we've got our pilot holes drilled now I use these tension pins right here and a bit that matches them see these tension pins, they, they hold wrist pins and stuff like that, and they got this little slot here. So what ends up happening is when you drive them in, the slot gets pushed together, which causes everything to expand. They stay in place. So as, you got, as long as you got the right size drill bit now, you're going to take these and drill this out. So we're going to put one of these in. You always want to remember, when you're, if you're using tension pins, this groove has to go towards the back. So when your strings come up through and go across it, if they're turned this way, your string is going to slip out, it's going to get cut, or it's going to cut into the wood. So when we're putting these in, the tension pins get to the back. Another thing I want to think about when I'm using these, let's get that bit off and another one in. Should have hooked up my other drill. We're going to go from the top halfway through like so. So I'm going to go to my pilot hole. I want to make sure this is straight all the way down. Um, so we're going to go about halfway through on each one of these holes like so. And then we're going to flip this over. And come in from the other way. That way our wood's not all busted up. There we go. Clean those up one more time. You got to pay attention to the bit that you're using here because if it's too big, these will just slip out and fall through. Um, if it's too small and you try and drive these in, you will end up with the tailpiece split. Once that happens, you're kind of dead in the water so we just again 
That slot always goes to the back. That's the most important thing you can do here now on this part. And we will go ahead and tap those in. There we go. We're flush there now. You can see that they don't come all the way through over here. And I've got a way um, the string keepers aren't going to fit down in there. So I'm going to take the plate off and take this out now. And I'm going to open these up a little bit so they will keep a string keeper there without getting stuck. If you put a string keeper, try to put the string in there, the string keeper will get hung up. And it will never work its way to seat the bottom of that wrist pin there and your strings won't stay in tune or whatever so we're going to fix that next i want you to notice a couple things here first like my uh grateful dead hammer hey shout out to my bearded friend alexander hope things are going good for you buddy always see you at uh, north mississippi all-star concerts uh this bit of course, it's going to go right back in there with my wrist pins. I don't want to be digging for that every time, right? I also keep a pilot bit down in there. But I'm going to take this graduated bit. These are good, good things. And I'm going to drill down until I hit that metal. I can feel it right there. And right there. And there. And there. And that's going to give me the holes big enough. Or at least a start to it. Now I'm going to take my countersink tool and make that hole big enough to fit. Again, I'm going to take this off right now, catch up with you there. But you get the idea. Now the string keeper will fit down in there without hanging up. All right, we've got the last one here. Now I'll just keep a can on my bench top to keep the the parts of the current project I'm working on. Uh, hey, did you hear about the crime against Mr. Peanut? Yeah, he was assaulted. All right, we dropped that neck down out of that box there now. And we can kind of get to these right here. There we go. Now, the next part is this tape right here. I'm going to want to come inside the body. Now, we'll put a screw in it over here somewhere so we can ground the strings. Again, the strings are metal. They come up through here. The tension pins are metal. The strings are touching the tension pins. And so, this is wood. That's not going to help us. So, if we take a piece of this tape, I'm going to lay it on here. It's okay if you can see the tape through the sides it looks a little bit rustic before we put the metal piece on so i'm going to lay this like this now i'm going to take my people say i'm insensitive that's a lie you see i have these pink scissors i'm going to put this like this cut that and i'm going to take one of the corners now typically when i try to do this on camera it takes me about three hours to get this corner right Oh, there we go. It's coming up, or at least it's trying to. Now, let me show you a trick. You don't want to, you don't want to be pulling this all off at once. So you, you've, you're going to get this side here. Yeah, I'm an old man. Watch when you get to be an old man. See what you can do. Anyway, I want it to be over those holes, right there. Now I'm going to take something like my Ken Falls Graph Election Pencil and I'm gonna I'm gonna hold this like this and as long as I walk this down and keep that you see what I'm doing here I'm just walking this down and making sure that I keep tension on it and then yeah tear it up Bill Abel anyway you see that We'll flatten this out now. Use this piece I had left over to come over like this and put me a couple spots for that screw to hook into. But you can see when I do this here, I can see where my holes are. So 
So I'm going to take and I'm going to po poke those through so I can tell where they're going to be. You see that? Important you do that. Now before I got going here, I knew from setting the plate up on the box how much this tail piece was going to be sticking out plat past the plate. So I took this piece of hoodoo church metal, fence metal I had. I got from a undisclosed location in LA and uh, I took one of my pencils and I laid it on here and marked off how big this needed to be and you can see I, I got a line there and a line there. So now I got these fancy shears right here. These are good shears. So I'm just going to cut right inside that line right there. Do not covet my shears. Go up to there. It's okay if I go by it a little bit because I'm going to cut a few more like this out of here. Okay. And I'm going to cut that out just like that. Now, wherever it flew off to, I'm going to make sure it lines up here. And I want it just a tad smaller than this wood part because if it's not, the edges are going to come out and they are going to uh, possibly cut somebody. So I'm going to take this to the belt sander quick. I'm going to round these edges off and make this just a tad smaller than the wood. You see how this is? I'm going to get to the belt sander. I'll see you in a minute. All right, there we go. Um, I have rounded the edges off. I'll still have a little filing to do once it gets on here, but this, and, and it's just a tad smaller. So you don't have metal sticking out for people to get caught on, okay? Next thing you need to make sure, the last thing you want to check is your plate. I have this lined up on this guitar here where the neck and the frets come down a little bit into the box here, and the plate lines up like that. So I want this neck to be in, I don't want it to blunt off at the end of the box. So if I look at this, yeah, everything's just perfect. So now with my third hand I have, I'm going to want to take this metal here and just get one corner where it needs to be, like so. Maybe we'll move that up just a little bit. And then I'm going to tap that corner so I can get a mark to start. I'm going to drill four holes, one in each corner, to hold this plate onto here. Okay, using our mock-up, you can see we're going to have these holes in the corner. So we're going to hold this down. I've put a clamp on it this time. And then I've drilled that starter hole, and I'm just going to go down through a little bit. These are going to be the same size um, screws as we would use to put our tuners on. So I'm just going to carefully go to each one the starter this pilot hole here with that oil is going to be a really important thing. Also when you're using a bit like this these little tiny bits you see people holding this way out here like that you don't want to do that because it puts a lot of tension it'll snap off. That hole don't need to be a bit about that big. It's not. It's only going to be about that deep right there. So you just want to make sure you don't got a bunch of wallering around out there, especially when you're drilling metal because the bits will snap off. There we go. I'm going to put a screw in here right now in each one of these holes, and then that way I can pull this clamp off and do the other two holes. Hey, y'all know why there's an 8 on a Mississippi license plate? Yeah, so you can hold these little screws in here to make a license plate guitar later after the plate's expired. Man, I am a plethora of information Eni. Okay, now things don't move we take that clamp off and I know you were just dying to see me tap these other two starter holes with my awl. Oh I hear you out there. I hear what you're saying. You're saying hey man you covered up those holes what are you going to do? Well do you really think someone is smart enough to have the world's smallest blower would work himself into a corner like this? Look at that. Well, definitely not. 
because check out what I have. I have this thing called a drill. Now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get rid of that. Get that out of the way. So one of these reasons my videos are 87 hours long. Get that out of the way. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my drill bit here and I'm going to drill down through the center of these tension pins. One, two, three, four. I'm glad it wasn't any more strings than that because that's about as high as I can count to. But look at, look at them holes right there. Now I'm going to take my awl and my trusty mallet here and I'm going to tap those down like so and voila this is for my string holes now you'll notice that if I drive the the holes down this way not only does the metal here go down into the tension pins but it also rounds the edges off so my strings don't get cut. If I were to put strings through there right now with that metal sticking up like there, it would get cut. The string would get cut. So I'm just going to do this. And well, remember, my string over here is going to be a big thumper string, and this is the outside one. So I might want to make this one just a little bit bigger. The last thing I want to do now is make sure that my tension pins didn't get driven out and that's the problem if you use a bit that's a little too big so I'm going to take a nail set I'm going to make sure that those didn't move on me nope they're good so there we go look at that get a string run it through there the keeper will ride right here. It's enough, enough off the bottom of the box here where the keepers aren't going to be sitting out and getting hung, hung up on everything. Let's see if I can put this together and show you what I'm talking about. See that? There's enough room for the string keepers to sit right there. And we are good to go. It looks old. It's rustic. It's effective. And... The strings are going to be grounded. So that's it on how to make a tailpiece really cheap and really quick. All right. That's it. I hope you learned something there. And Bill Abel, uh, and find out who he is. Uh, get, a, get a piece of his pottery. There's nothing like that. And uh, anyway, thanks for calling me down with that music, Bill, because I'm pretty upset. You know, I think i got to get back on digging around my law books to do something about this. Yeah, what do you know, Mattel, right? You just wait a minute. I'm, I'm fixing a lawyer up on you, son. Anyway, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. I'll let you know how this turns out.